Data Privacy Day is observed on January the 28th every single year. The aim of it is to raise awareness of the value of online privacy, which has been proclaimed as a fundamental right of all citizens. In fact, the Council of Europe uh, around April 26, I think it was in 2006, decided to coin a data protection day and announced that it would be observed each year on January the 28th. The day in which the Council of Europe's Data Protection Convention, then known as Convention 108, was actually opened. Outside of Europe, Data Protection Day is now observed worldwide and is known as Data Privacy Day and is extended to Data Privacy Week, a week in which we observe a range of conversations and focus on the big topic of data privacy. In fact, this is now celebrated globally to raise one of the most important issues of the digitally advancing world. The main goal of the day, of course, is to educate people on the challenges and to inform them of their rights around data privacy, but to talk specifically about the types of people who are tasked with the challenge of protecting that data and enforcing those data protections and effectively making sure that data that like you and I, Mick, and, and others are giving them, to, uh, whether it's a bank or an airline or, or a social media platform, and we entrust them with, to protect it and ensure that it isn't leaked or hacked. So to have this conversation, I'm joined today by Mick McClooney, who's the technical director, leading the technical team at Trend Micro in Australia, New Zealand. Mick, great to see you. Thanks for making time to join me. Thank you so much, Des. Uh, a real pleasure to join you. I wonder, before we dive into the big topic that I just highlighted, maybe could you just give us a brief outline of what your role and, and remit is as technical director across the ANZ region for Trend Micro, and maybe just a brief outline of kind of where the business fits in that industry and market. Yeah, absolutely. So lovely to meet you all and thank you all for being here with me. Um, my my role at Trend Micro is to run the pre and post sales team technically across the region. So that's all the way from Wellington across to Perth and all the major cities in between. So that's my responsibility and helping customers solve the tricky problems in, in cybersecurity is, is really where my focus is and that's what my team's focus is, coming up with the right solutions. Perfect. And and the very reason I want to catch up with you today, because you speak to the, the the very people who are tasked with the challenge of protecting our data. To that point, I wonder if we could just kick off with a 30,000 foot point of view take on data privacy as you see it, what it actually means in practice in the real world, and specifically to the customers that you work with and the C-suite who are tasked with that very challenge of enforcing data privacy. Yeah, I think um, clearly we see in the whole of cybersecurity, you constantly see, see challenges around visibility. And we've talked, you know, cybersecurity has talked uh, about visibility across many aspects of the IT environment. And I think more recently, what's come into focus is, I'd say over the last four or five years, people understand the value of data. People understand that changing format of data and how, how actually... Um, how concentrated and powerful that data is. And if I look back 10 years with the way we used to handle data then and the way we do now, there's a lot more care being taken. But do we have the visibility? And that, that that's one of the challenges I see in, in, a, in, in talking with customers and understanding their challenges is that data can move so easily and so rapidly and, and the formats and, and the ways in which um, data is, is now compressed, et cetera, can 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 actually represent real challenges in understanding your position and understanding what data you've got, where it is, and and how you're going to protect it. But it is, in, in essence, the the core of everything, right? Um, somebody somebody quoted that data is the new oil. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, it, it's that kind of uh, it's that kind of view that that uh, that we have to deal with. Here. It is indeed. And you touched on a couple of points there. I wonder if we could just circle back to in a little more detail. The first is sort of just around the challenge of managing data privacy. And we spoke a couple of days ago when we were sort of preparing for this. And you mentioned a couple of things around endpoint security and data access. And then you also spoke about the issue of, of data locality and specifically knowing where your data is, who has yeah. access to it, the types of access. So I wonder if we could just start with the, the challenges around managing data privacy and specifically around things that you work with your clients with, whether, whether it's endpoint security at devices or at the data center infrastructure and clouds and that data access. What are you seeing around some of the challenges uh, pre-pandemic and during pandemic and currently with regard to the issue of protecting endpoint security devices, where that data is and where it's moving, whether it's encrypted in motion or at rest and so forth? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think the pre-pandemic -pre and pandemic uh, refocused us on this world where endpoint security 
became very, very important because there was no longer this border de type defence that you had. And I think that endpoint visibility has led, has always, had, you know, has always been important, but it, it became more important during pandemic times where people were working from home and data was moving around. And this idea that you um, understand who has access to what data and how you're controlling that access to data is, is, is become incredibly important. So first of all, around the endpoint scenario, um, it's who's got what device? How safe is that device? Is it, is it properly protected? Do you know what's on it? And I think a further, um, a, a now a new level to that is, is, I mean, that's typical endpoint protection, but a new level to that is, is coming around, do I know what data's on it? Um, and people are terming a new phrase which is data detection and response, um, which may be what used to be known as data leak protection or DLP in some new clothes. Um, DLP was typically a, a, a quite a quite a difficult exercise in any corporate organization. You had to categorize documents, tag and understand them, uh, understand how those documents were moving and try and fingerprint everything that's going on. So quite a heavy uh, workload. Um, I think the way we're treating it now, or the new, the new vision is that try and understand where your data is with regard to the other sensor points you have around your network. So your endpoint sensors, your sensors in the cloud, your sensors on the network. How can these help you just identify what data is moving where? And can you then track and form a, form a lineage, if you like, of, of that data, its source, where it ended up? whose laptop it's on, why it's on there. And you can imagine actually in some of the recent cases that if you kind of knew that you had a concentration of highly uh, sensitive PII or personal private inf information in, in, in concentrated areas, that would raise a red flag by itself. And you go, well, why is that there? And how can I protect it? And should it be there? unobservated, et cetera. So these are the challenges. And I guess it's feeding back to that central conversation that we're having, Des, which is around visibility of things in your IT environment. And data is just the new dimension to that, I believe. It is. In fact, I wonder if I can just quickly touch on one other thing you just mentioned there, which really piqued my interest. And I know our audience is going to have a similar question before we get around the data locality piece of it. And that is that, you know, in many ways, a lot of focus is around uh, device protection, uh, endpoints and so forth. Are you seeing now a shift where uh, access to the types of data that people are using are across multiple devices, whether it's BYOD phones, whether it's an issued phone or laptop, sometimes it may be a shared device. And the shift is, is a balance between the devices in plural form, whether it's a work or a personal device, versus environments, as in I may be using a web browser to go internet banking one day, I may use my phone out the next day, I may use my iPad the day after. And that organization is now challenged with multiple endpoint securities, whether it's SSL encryption or whether it's the likes of Trends Micro, Trend Micro solutions in the middle somewhere. Is that a trend that you're seeing dramatically increase during the pandemic or was that a linear growth path we've been on for some time anyway? No, I think I, I'm seeing a, a dramatic increase in that. And um, this 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 concentration, this, this it's kind of, you can run in from anything from any device is, is very much a SaaS-based world of applications running and being in the cloud. Um, and, you know, at risk of throwing out another term that's kind of maybe abused to some extent, but zero trust is part of, part of that scenario in that it talks around the philosophy of who's got access to what, how do I know, how do I know that they're valid, and how can I control that access to both applications and data? And I think that's forming part of it, right? This kind of um, idea that you can no longer trust that because I'm synced into the VPN, I'm behind the corporate firewall that I am who I say I am because many of our applications, many of our data is, is out there in the cloud. So, and, and the other challenge, of course, beyond that is, is my data where it shouldn't be in the cloud? Like uh, somebody uploaded it into some shadow IT system that's running, you know, uh, running with data that really shouldn't be accessible in that way without the view and, and protection of the IT department. So these are some of the challenges. And to that end, I think zero trust philosophies and some of the secure access methods around that may be providing part of the answer, but only part, right? I think the other part of the answer is really understanding the core of where your data is, 
as well, you know, uh, and having that visibility, if that makes sense. And, you know, that talks about locality, it talks about access, it talks about privilege access and who's got access to what. I think you can start to have that nuanced view of who's got access to what data. And when you get that visibility, you can kind of work out why and work out if people are overprivileged, et cetera. Um, yeah, I'm not sure absolutely. if that did, that did that kind of you Makes nailed it. You. you nailed it. In fact, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have you back to have a longer conversation around the topic of zero trust because that's that's a really hot topic now and it's on everyone's lips, but many people don't fully understand the difference between not being trusted versus not needing to trust, which we'll get into another conversation I'd love to talk about in more detail. The second element that we spoke about the other day that I really want to touch on, and you, you mentioned a couple of times, there was the combination of data locality and you know, whether it's in an on-premises environment, whether it's in a third-party data center, whether it's in a hosted environment, in a cloud platform or so forth, or with an ISP, and specifically knowing where your data is, um, who's got access to that, uh, where they've got access to it, mm -hmm. when they've got access to it, how they're accessing it, and whether they should even have access to it in the first place. You know, For example, um, the data might be available to me 24 seven because it's my data in a bank system, or maybe it's somebody running a payroll that should really only have access between nine and 11 on a Monday for some reason. This must be something you're coming across a lot now. And that is, you know, this challenge of where is my data? You mentioned a couple of the examples there. For example, yes. we know a lot of leaks have happened because some poor techie's gone and done a dumper or a database, done an upgrade, imported the data, and then inadvertently forgotten to delete that dump. And someone's found that it's sitting in a bucket somewhere in a cloud and they, they it's like, you know, they won the lotto and there's a jackpot. But at the other end yes. of the spectrum, it could be something as simple as someone's lost backup tapes and that are not encrypted or um, somebody's oh, got I'm... shared access. You know, there's all these challenges around where is my data? And, and people like myself, for example, I wear the hat as a data science and, and a data analyst in my own company many times. And we'll do things like take copies of data and hopefully put it in protected spaces to do analysis on it and get some insights. But then we've got this data cleansing process. Where we've got to make sure that once we gain those insights, we know what to do with the data we're left with. Do we delete the original dump, whether it's CSV or JSON or whatever, XML? Yeah. There's all those kinds of things where that access control in the database may be thwarted by exporting. Let's just talk about data locality. Surely that's something that's becoming more and more tricky for people to manage when we're now talking about shadow IT that you mentioned, whether things are hosted in the cloud. What are you seeing out there? And, and I'm sure there must be a lot of hair being pulled out from CXOs who are just trying to figure out where the data actually is. From time to time, and yeah. Look, I think actually, I, I see two sides to that coin. Um, yeah. I see a decreasing using USB sticks generally, which is great because the cloud is there to replace that functionality. That's good for everybody because that gi that gives you some element of visibility because you you can understand what URLs they go to. Therefore, you can understand them from that Casby sense of understanding where people go in the cloud. You can kind of work out. You, you you have ways of tracking it. A USB stick, you're lost, right? So I th I, that's encouraging for me. And the way things used to be was perhaps a bit more chaotic. I think the, the, the shadow IT in the cloud is also a solvable problem. If you have visibility through the device, the endpoint device, where people are going, then you have an idea of what's happening in shadow IT. So therefore, you can, you can put some visibility and control around it and ask some questions. Given that, most of these things aren't happening maliciously, right? People are making mistakes. It's about misconfiguration of mistakes, essentially. So, so understanding your cloud posture, for instance, understanding the posture of your applications and, and, and your identities. Um, and there is this, this idea of uh, identity risk as well. You know, that, that understanding identities and the kind of kinds of things they do allows you to understand what a risky behavior is and, 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 and talk to people and educate them around data, safe places to put it, what, what is PII. So I think, you know, I, I, I would say that we're heading to a better place, both in terms of understanding the value of the data, the power of the loss of the data, right, the, the risk involved there, and then maybe maybe getting better tooling to understand our visibility and risk around controlling access to that. You know, Brilliant. And, and, and then the education piece as well, right? So educating yeah. people about cybersecurity and don't click on this has certainly been a thing. I think the next phase is to actually teaching people about what is PII, how dangerous is it to have it all in one bunch, who can access it, and so that it becomes everybody's, if you like, modus operandi, right? If you've, that you know the power 
of the payroll in an Excel spreadsheet, right? <laughs> and emailing that out <laughs> to the wrong forbid. people is a bad thing. But you know, you don't want to learn that by mistake. You want to you want to know that beforehand. That, 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 that's kind of it for me. Um, so yeah, going back to visibility, I think that's from the the C suite, the CIO. Give me visibility of where my data is and how people are accessing the cloud to, to, to access that data, then I can start to talk to people about, you know, what should happen versus what, what is happening and, and correcting some of the gaps. That's that's my view. Indeed. And, and, and you've summarized very nicely around that very key point, which is what uh, Data Privacy Day and Data Privacy Week is all about, generating awareness and education. <clears throat> Excuse me. To wrap us up, uh, Mick, um, uh, not so much just in your role as technical director there at Trend Micro in Australia and New Zealand, but for our audience who are probably going to be very keen to have a conversation around these very topics that you, you very well uh, educate us on now, um, what's the best way to reach out to you and your team and Trend Micro ANZ to actually have that conversation, start a discussion, and to, to get your help to develop that vernacular, that language with which to have that conversation inside their organization within their teams? Thank you so much, Des. So uh, you can reach out to us, uh, obviously, via the website, trendmicro.com, and um, we, we, we've we got the contact numbers, and just reach out to us, message us there, and uh, I can leave my contact details with you, Des, if you like. <laughs> but, you know, we <laughs> uh, Trend Micro has, we talk about these issues of visibility and cybersecurity, um, and we're trying to make our our website much more relevant to talk about the pain points around that so so uh it, it that that's probably the first place to start brilliant yes and and to our audience and for you mick uh just to show you we will definitely have information uh in the show description for this video uh both a link to your website to a couple of the example uh bits of info on that platform for people just to start and become aware of and see what you can do also contact details for the organization to reach out uh, and uh, to summarize, I think the key thing out of this today more than anything is that you've highlighted the fact that people do need to start working on increasing the route of awareness, increasing the investment they're making in education, and certainly looking at some of their environments, to, as you said, to see where is your data, who has access to that data, what sort of controls are around it. And, and as you mentioned before, putting some of the tools around that so you've got immediate alerting and dashboarding and reporting so that not only are your staff aware of some of the risks, but you can actually then have tools such as those from Trend Micro, to make you aware of them in real time to be able to respond to them. Mix, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. It's really been a great conversation. I hope we have you back again soon. In the meantime, we will ensure that everyone has access to your website and your office contact details so they can reach out. I know they'll definitely want to talk to you. And until we have you back on, stay safe and uh, keep making magic happen. Thank you so much, Des, and thank you for your efforts and, and inviting me on the show. Absolute Pleased to be pleasure. here. Thank Take you. care. Bye now.